king was dead. Khufu, builder of the greatest monument in the world, was no more. His life was a mystery, but not his legacy. During his reign, royal power has reached its peak. The king was the center of the cosmos, and his pyramid was a testament to his power. No one knows if his death was greeted with tears, rejoicing or both. But regardless, his children try to follow his example and fly as high as the illustrious monarch. However, the one who always looked towards the sky does not see the cracks that appear under his feet. After Khufu's death, it was his son, the Jedefra, who assumed the throne. Alas, we know almost nothing about him. However, we know the location of his tomb, and strangely, he decided to move away from his father and settle in Abu Hawash. We also know that his pyramid was never finished, which seems to indicate that his reign was short. Another mystery surrounding the Jedesfra's life is that his son did not inherit the throne as traditions detected. It was his brother Khafre who became king after him. Some have tried to assume that the Jedesfra reigns was marked by a dynastic conflict which ended with his death. It is possible, but his name was not erased from the royal list, as would be the case if he were deemed an usurper. Khafre, barely known by his Greek name Kepre, is much more famous thanks to the construction of the second pyramid of Giza and the Sphinx. If Dejedefre seemed to want to move away from his father's legacy, Khafre tried to follow his steps. The quality and wealth in the tombs of the nobility indicates that his reign was very prosperous. Unfortunately, the only document that tells us about Scafra's life is the writings of Herodotus, where he is described as a tyrant as hateful as his father. But if you have seen my video on Khufu, you already know that Herodotus' accusations don't have much archaeological significance. After Khafre's death, Egypt, we experience a period of turmoil, where apparently two branches of the royal family will dispute the control of the kingdom. Alas, this extremely confused period has offered us almost no written source, which makes it impossible to establish a chronology of the events that marked the end of the Fourth Dynasty. Kaume seemed to have returned during the reign of Menkaure, better known by his Greek name Mykerinos, who tried to follow the example of his prestigious ancestors by building the third big pyramid of Giza. Alas, this one was the smallest among his sisters, and he did not manage to finish her, leaving to his son 
Shep says Kaf, the responsibility to finish the work. Historians still debate whether Shep says Kaf was the last king of this dynasty or whether he was followed by the mysterious Dejet Ptah, whom some believe to be an usurper. If you have watched my video on Khufu, maybe you remember a story where a hermit announced the arrival of three sons of Ra, who will take the throne. Uzerkaf will be the first of the three, and the one who started the fifth dynasty. This family, which ruled for approximately a century, brought a period of peace and prosperity to the kingdom. Art and culture develop reaching new levels of sophistication, making this period to be known as a true golden age. This dynasty would also see the writing of one of the most important texts in Egyptian history, the Maxims of Ptahotep, a series of advices supposedly written by the vizier Ptahotep that educated the new generations in the way of wisdom and justice. If you are a leader, be gracious and you hearkenest unto the speech of a suppliant. Let him not hesitate to deliver himself of that which he had thoughts to tell thee, but be desirous of removing his injury. Let him speak freely that a thing from which he hath come to thee may be done. However, the biggest change was the social evolution that Egypt was going through. For centuries, the king was the center of everything. Only those who had royal blood could have political influence. But maybe due to the crisis at the end of the 4th dynasty, the god Ra will become the center of the cosmos in the Egyptian consciousness. This does not mean that the construction of pyramids will stop but they will decrease a lot in size, and the kings will concentrate more in the construction of solar temples. Being part of the government will no longer be a privilege of the royal family. Individuals without royal blood will assume their functions of vizier, one of the most powerful and influential charges in Egyptian society. Priest we begin to marry members of the royal family and become more and more independent. Indeed, there are even those who assume that the first king of this dynasty, Ur Sekaf, was a priest who married a princess. As no man is able to rule a kingdom alone, since unification, Egypt had been divided into several provinces, which historians today use the Greek term nome to define. Each was ruled by the individual, chosen by the king in person. The problem with this system was that the power was hereditary, and over time, new generations no longer had any direct connection with the king or his family. Archaeological evidence shows us that during this period, these nomarchs began to build monuments in their capitals. The independent power of nomarchs was growing. What were the kings doing? Were they unable to see the cracks forming, or were they powerless to do anything? At the moment, it is impossible to know for sure, but personally, I don't believe in none of these possibilities. The Fifth Dynasty is a period of transition. Nothing seems to indicate a major internal conflict, and the sharing of power was made with the apparent consent of the kings. I also don't believe that the monarchs and priests were plotting to seize power, although 
almost nothing is known about the lives of the pharaohs of this dynasty. What we know is that they were respected, and their funeral coat were honored during centuries. These changes were natural and necessary. Egypt has grown too big, and the kingdom could not be longer controlled by only one person. However, any change, even necessary, brings conflict. Dark clowns are approaching Egypt. But before the storm, a last dynasty would impose its will, the last breath of glory from the old kingdom. Step on